What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video. And in today's video, I want to talk about fetch errors and what gotchas we need to be aware of. So if you remember, in the previous video, we covered fetch, which is a browser API, which essentially just allows us to perform Ajax request right out of the box. So we have JavaScript file, we don't need to import any kind of library like Axios, and we simply type fetch, then we pass in the URL, and it returns a promise. And in order to get the JSON format, we just run dot JSON on the response that we're getting back. And then since we already know how to use async await, we just set up our function as async, and then stick the await syntax in the try catch. And then of course, once we get back the data, we do something with it. Now, of course, in this case, we're just console logging. Now, for this example, I added some few features where effectively I have the button. Of course, I'm targeting the button, and only when I click on a button, then we fetch the data, and you'll see in a second why. So, in this case, since everything is correct, I'm using again my own URL. So, this is from my own backend, and essentially, I'm just serving here some tours for my React project. So, let's go over here, click and check it out. Of course, in the console, you can see array of five items, which means that I'm getting the correct data. And you would think, you would think that if I mess up the URL, meaning if I'm trying to look for the endpoint that doesn't exist, that I'm going to get back here the error where I have the console log. But just wait a second, and you'll see the interesting setup, where essentially we are getting the error but error is coming from this JSON one. Why? Well, because we're trying to run JSON on something that we cannot. And JSON is simply saying, hey, listen, there's something wrong with your code because I'm trying to implement the functionality, but it's not working. Now, let's take a look what we're getting back. And then let's comment out the await one for the JSON. And you'll see that once you fetch on a set of which I don't have the tours now, so I'll comment that one out as well. Once we fetch, notice the response. So I'm getting here the 404, but nowhere I have this console log from line 15. Why? Well, because when it comes to fetch, even if the response comes back with any status code in the 400s or 500s, which essentially are some kind of errors and we're not going to be getting data back, it's not going to throw the error. Why? Well, because when it comes to fetch, it can still resolve it. So only if the fetch cannot resolve the response, then of course, it considers it as an error. As an example, network errors will trigger the catch. But when it comes to traditional errors, as far as fetch is concerned, it can still resolve it. So notice, we still get back the response. But of course, it's not what we're looking for. Correct? You can clearly see that. So status is 404. And then we have status text not found. So therefore, if we're trying to run JSON on this response, of course, we get the actual error that comes from line 12. And just to showcase how the network error is going to look like. Let me just navigate back to the big screen. And in here, let me refresh one more time. I'll try to fetch. Okay, I'm going to get the error. And now what I simply want to do is block this request URL. And essentially, we can do that if we go to the network tab, and then more specifically, let's look for the URL, again, the course API react towards project, and then right click, and let's go with block request URL. So now, of course, once I try to fetch in a console, I'll actually see the type error fail to fetch. So this is coming from my console log, this is coming from my catch block. And essentially, the reason why that happens, again, we have the network error, so we cannot fetch the resource. And then the catch block, of course, kicks in. And we can clearly see that because we are not console logging the response. So immediately, we are going to the catch block, since the URL is blocked. So let me go back and unblock it. So let's go with unblock, or we can probably just refresh. I think both of them will accomplish the same thing. And now let's try to fetch one more time. And of course, I can see that my response is 404 not found. And now what we simply want to do 
let's go back to our code. And then right after we're fetching for the resource, we want to set up the if condition, where I'll say, if the response, okay, property is actually equal to false, then we'll throw the error ourselves. And then of course, we'll right away get that error in a catch block. So in here, let's just go with bank. So I'll go with the exclamation point, And I'll say, if response, okay, property. So essentially what I'm saying, if this is false, then I want to throw my own error message. And just to simplify this, I'll actually set up a new variable. And I'm going to go with template string, where I'll say there was an error. And in here, let's access two things. Let's access the response status. So the 404 in this case, as well as the status text one. And I'll place them in quotation marks. But in here, of course, I have template string. So I can access both of the values where I'll say response status. And then the second thing, like I said, is the status text. So let's go here with the response and then status text. And once I have both of these things in place, I simply want to go with throw new error. And now, of course, I'll just pass in the message. And then we can remove this console log and then go back to all the tours. And of course, now, if there is some kind of error, we'll right away throw it over here. And then it's going to be console log in the catch block. So now once I click, check it out. Now, of course, we have error. There was an error for a four not found. So this is going to give you a good idea that you're actually getting back the error response instead of just relying on a fetch because fetch only cares about the network errors. And therefore, if you have some kind of code that relies on this data, and uh, instead of 200, which of course means success, now you're getting some kind of error response, you'll be still in good shape, because you'll check for that. And if that's the case, then you will throw the error yourself.